Proverbs chapter 18 Through desire a man having separated himself monk religious seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom 1 Corinthians 1 30 and 31 he has a want he has a desire A fool has no delight in understanding. He doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to see. He doesn't want to go after it. He won't do. So you put him in a, in a school system and you pay for him. But that his heart may discover itself to sin by his nature. He'll learn who he is. He's a fool. And he ain't going to go nowhere. And he ain't going to do nothing. When the wicked come, cometh, then cometh also contempt. And with ignominy, which is shame, reproach. So you don't want the wicked to come. The wicked has come into America. We have shame and we have contempt. And they don't even believe they have shame. When this country will stand before God at the great white throne judgment for all the things that they're allowing. But they call evil good and good evil. The words of a man's mouth are as deep water. So refreshing enough chapter 10 verse 11 and 13 14 and the wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook John 10 37 to 31 Psalms chapter 1 it giveth life deep waters that's what Jesus was at the well with the woman John chapter 4 he says don't you have a pail or bucket how are you gonna get this it's pure and peace and full it is not good to accept the persons of the wicked I mean if he's wicked don't accept him acknowledge who he is to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Herod, Festus, and Pilate. God's going to overthrow them. Because those that were under their judgment, under their judgment throne, people who were innocent were persecuted. You know, the Bible says, be not, I mean, not, not, not uh, Judge not least she be judged and it goes about saying that you know what judgment you meet it shall be returned unto you. Can you imagine Pilate standing before Jesus Christ? Say, Hi buddy, uh you remember when I stood before you three times you said I was innocent? I'll I'll just chastise him and then let him go free. Imagine, imagine those two facing each other at judgment as Jesus Christ as the judge and not Pilate. How about Jesus? How about Herod standing before Jesus as Jesus as the as the judge? You want to see some puppet show? Is that what you want to see me for? Even you, Pilate said, found me innocent. Why did you turn me over? A fool's lips enter a contention, which is not good. Strife, problems, battling. And his mouth calls for strokes. He's asking for a whip in the mouth. He's asking for a beating. 
Usually a drunkard would be like that. He'll talk so much, he'll, he'll, he's asking for them to beat him in the face. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are the snare of his soul. Romans 10.9 For the mouth, man confesses of the salvation. A fool can. He's gonna his mouth is going to proclaim destruction that he did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with his heart. What about a fool's mouth is his destruction? What if he's saved? And he doesn't confess salvation. The words of a talebearer. And if you sit tonight, it is halloween -y. And when you go into history and realize that on this date, years and years and years and years, even before Christ, they sat as talebearers telling stories of witches and goblins and goblins and whatever you have, ghosts. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly, the nerves. A doctor told me the reason why you get those butterflies in your stomach when, you, when you're nervous is that it is the first nervous reaction your brain sends to. It's your stomach. That's why your stomach gets the problems it does from nerves. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly, the, the tail bearer. Telling stories, according to this verse, is unhealthy. Amazing what Solomon knew in the medical field that the doctors don't. Upset stomach could be because you're talking, you're telling tales. He also that is slothful in his work, lazy is a brother to him that is a great waster. The government is a big waster. So the government is working with the, with the slothful. The guy who is lazy is equal to the guy who is a waster. Let's say the guy who is a waster, he earns his money on Friday. And before 12.01 a.m. Saturday, his money's gone. And he can't account for it but the toilet, if I can be clean. Number one and throwing it up. That's a waste. Especially when alcohol is... A lot more expensive than water or even soda. Waster who wastes his money on cigarettes. Blows it up in smoke. The Bible says that you're a waster. A great waster. You, you're kin to a slothful man who, who's lazy in his job. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. So when Abimelech goes and attacks the city, they all go run into the tower. And Abimelech is hit on the forehead with a stone. What characters that remind you of in the Bible? And from a strong tower, it's built strong, and you can see out over the plain who's coming. And when you can see who's coming, you can prepare yourself. The righteous runneth into it and are saved. The righteous runneth into it and is saved. Wicked men don't run to the Lord. I'm going to say it again. The wicked don't run to the Lord. You're a Christian and you run to the doctors for the first thing. 
And you don't run to the Lord? I'm not saying not go to the doctor, but run to the Lord first. Listen, I've had many medical ailments and, and troubles and situations. I've gone to the Lord. There's nothing else I can go to. And either he's shown me a cure or he's taken care of it. And a lot of that is already forgotten and gone. Turn to the Lord in your problems. The strong tower. And if he's the door and Satan is knocking at the door, he won't let him in. He only let the sheep and those that he calls come in. The sheepfold. And you know the sheepfold, you know you know you know when he puts the sheep into that little fenced in area? There is three and a half walls, you can say. Only one doorway. And when the shepherd puts his sheep in there for the night, the only way those sheep can get out of that sheepfold is they have to get jump over the shepherd, which is sleeping in the doorway, which makes him the door. That's how he keeps his sheep safe. Anybody's going to go to those sheep, it's got to crawl over his body. Anybody who wants to get out, it's got to crawl or jump over him. It's a foundation of Jesus Christ who is who's in control of the entranceway, the only entranceway. There's only one entranceway. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. 1 Timothy 6, 9 through 16 about the rich man. And as an high wall in his own conceit. Luke 12, 2 Timothy again, chapter 6. To him, money is the answer. He's not running to the Lord that's the strong tower in verse 10. He won't carry a purse when he's standing at the great white throne judgment. He won't be carrying a pocketbook when he's standing at the judgment seat of Christ. Before destruction, the heart of the man is the heart of man is haughty. Matthew twenty three twelve. Pride. And before honor is humility. Destruction comes after pride. Honor comes after being low, meek, and humble. It's a rule of God. He that answers a matter before he heareth it. He doesn't hear the whole story. He gets half the truth. He sits down with one of the, the uh, uh, husband or wife. He listens to one of the parties and not the other, then gives advice without sitting the both of them down and listening to them both. Listen to both sides of the stories when people have problems. you got to hear both sides. Well, you don't get both sides. Matter of fact, you know what? There may be some cases you got to get three sides. Especially when you're a parent and you got two children involved and, and another adult. You gotta be wise. It it here is it it is a folly and shame unto him. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? Chapter seventeen, verse twenty two. Anyway, when your spirit has been wounded, when you've been hurt, 
The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge. Acts 28, 26. And the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. We started that off with verses 1 and 2. A wise man will seek God for, for knowledge. What he needs to know. A man's gift maketh room for him. And bringeth him before great men. It's not what you know. It's who you know. You know? I find a note I got here. Okay, he that is first in his own cause seemeth just. His side of the story is right. And you better not appear before the person that is verse 13, he that answers matter before he hears it. Because here, here's a guy in his own story, in his own eyes, he's right. But his neighbor cometh and searches for the truth, him. He gets all the parties together. He gets all the stories. Someone's lying. You know, you have a defendant in a courtroom. And you have the plaintiff. One of them is lying. A judge doesn't call the plaintiff in. Okay, now tell me your story. Okay, now. All right. I find you innocent and the other party guilty and they must pay. No, that's not how it happens. Calls in everybody that needs to be. And then when the judge sees that somebody who should be there and is not gets very suspicious. Well, why is this person not here? Why can't I question them? The law causes contentious contentions to cease. Lord, we got two men here for the apostles' office in Acts. Which one? Okay. I know Mathias and it was another, I forget his name. Draw straws, whatever they did. The Lord chose Messiah. And all doubt. And you say, Lord, I'm going to roll this die and put my faith and trust in you. If it's odds, yes. If it's evens, no. You roll that dice. And God says, no. There's no other talk. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Now he's talking about a fellow Jew because he's Jewish. Why not offend people? Maybe hard to get them back. Now that's not an old. That's not a New Testament thing. Jesus said, "Listen, you go to the person, you talk to them, and you get things right. If it doesn't get things right by between you and him, or by bringing somebody in in as a witness, or before the church, if they don't get it right. The person that won't get it right is to be considered as a heathen. I mean, my if my brother offends me seven times, you know, seven times a day, Lord, how many times should I forgive him? Seven times. Jesus says seventy times seven.
we are to forgive and to try to forget. That was the hard part. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle, very hard to be broken open, only by a key. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. I mean, you work, you buy food, your belly's happy at that moment. And with the increase of his lips, more food shall he be filled. Listen, your stomach is not going to be satisfied until you're dead. And there are certain foods out there you eat, and then an hour later, you're hungry again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Matthew twelve thirty seven and James chapter three. A judge has to say guilty. In his words, you're condemned. Adolf Hitler had to just say, smoke him, kill him. The Inquisitions torture him to death. When the Roman emperors ruled, it wasn't even their mouth. It was, you know, thumbs down, man. That's it. You're gone. Our tongue is very, very strong. And they that love it, wait a minute, yeah. And they that love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Love what? Death and life. Some kind of sowing and reaping. I don't understand. Those who have the ability with their tongue to, to profess death to someone. Well, their, maybe their death will be performed upon them. But I don't know. Adolf Hitler committed suicide, as far as we're told. I forget how they did Sodom and Zayn, where his death was. There are people in America today with their tongues, Proverbs chapter 1, said they're going to go kill somebody, kill somebody, and they're still living. Twenty-two. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. You wouldn't judge that by some husbands out there. Well, look at that. He calls a woman a thing. And you know what the Holy Spirit called Jesus Christ in Mary's womb in Luke chapter 1? Go check out Luke chapter 1 and find out what the Holy Spirit called Jesus. He called him a thing. Whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing. Proverbs 19, 14 and 31, 10. And obtaineth favor of the Lord. Well, look at that kind of favor. There's going to be a lot of husbands at the judgment seat of Christ, and God's going to say, What about the favor I gave you? What favor? That wife I gave you. Oh, her? Yeah, oh, her. I'll give an account. Draw up Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, and read that verse right in front of that idiot. 
I know I can't stand these people. And, oh, you know, my wife, blah blah blah. You said I do it too. You know, I think of how it goes. I haven't read in, in uh, or heard in the news. I guarantee it would be a newsworthy thing that if some if some guy, some father-in-law marched a guy down the aisle with a shotgun to his head. I think that would have made news, and I haven't heard anything like that. Well, I had to marry her. Well, you should have kept the zipper up. You know? I think L-O-V-E is part of the normal vowels. C-H-E-R. Well, cherish. I don't know how to spell it. I think that's in the vowels. All right, granted, maybe some wives go rotten. I'll grant that, but not too many. Only one of them right now I can think of. The poor uses entreaty, asking. It's likened to begging. But the rich answereth roughly, "No, get out of here." James 2 3 for the rich. And the poor, the poor plead. And, and the rich say no. A man that has friends must. I will, uh, let me quote a verse for, for you. Hold on, ready? Jesus said unto him, Very, very, ye must. <laughs> a man that has a friend must show himself friendly. I mean, when you're a rotten person, again, I got one person in mind, you don't have friends. Now, I can understand maybe one day, you know, you have a rotten attitude, you know, you just feel rotten, and, and you know, people are, well, woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you stay away from them, okay? But there'll be some times when you're a friend to them, you're an aid to them, you sacrifice for them. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And we've already read a verse like that the other day or that. You know, a brother or sister, somebody, you can't pick them. They come by birth. But when you choose friends, there, there's something about you too that you say, hey, I want to be friends. Hey, I want to be friends. And you go through things. And I will tell you what will break a friendship. Your salvation in serving Jesus Christ will break friendship. I don't care how long. I have not ever seen yet. I don't know if it's ever. Two worldly people friendship and one gets saved. And the other one doesn't. If that person hasn't broken away from you, yea, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're not doing something right. John 15, 13 and Matthew eleven nineteen. Yes, you're to have friends. Christian friends. Praying friends. You know, it's no, it's no more than out of the blue, somebody in church comes up to you, hey, I've been praying for you this week. Wow. Thank you for thinking about me. And when you go up to somebody and say, listen, you know, I've been praying for you. I pray for you. 
you know, last Tuesday, or I prayed for you last, you know, whenever. Again, we see that Jesus, the friendship, called Judas, the one that betrayed him, friend. It's a remarkable thing to stand out when you talk about friendship. Judas wasn't a true friend. But Jesus was willing to wrap his arms around and say, I forgive you. Can you imagine Peter's attitude at that point? That would have happened. The thing was, it, Lord, seven times a day, do I forget? I mean, and can you see Jesus' words? And I tell you, seventy times seven, Peter. I, I, that's just something that you know. I was just talking about. If Judas ever repented? I can see. I can just see Peter speaking up, oh, Lord. And I can turn. I can see Judas turn over to Peter and say, "Well, wait to the cockroach, okay? Then she never talk." <laughs> This little extra I read in the Bible, I just wonder if it would have been. I don't know if that's a sin, but that's another proverb down.